This is the cap rock in the Texas Panhandle, a rise in the terrain that's a source of lift for thunderstorms when surface winds flow from the east. I was out chasing here on April 21 hoping to catch some upslope storms on the western side of the cap rock, where it's flat as a pancake in some of the best chase country in the world. This was the day before the day type setup where chances for supercells and tornadoes were rather marginal. However, the next day looked like it could be a big event. I figured I would come down early and get a couple chase days out of this trip if I were traveling all the way down from Chicago. The storm initiated southwest of Lockton, Texas and quickly went severe warned. You can see it here in the distance. I stopped a few miles northeast of the storm hoping it would organize with some lowerings. The perspective here is deceptive as this storm was probably about 10 miles away. Due to the relatively low dew points, the base of the storm was quite high, making the storm look closer than it actually was. This storm had some nice, low precipitation supercell structure with a nice rain-free base and inflow band you can see here on the left. Like many low precipitation supercells, chasers underneath this supercell also reported very large hail, up to baseball size. I got impatient waiting for the storm to organize, so I moved in closer, and that's when I realized how high the base of the storm actually was, which was not a good sign for tornadoes. You can see the updraft base here is shrinking in size. The storm was dying. The streaks underneath the right side of the storm you can see here are precipitation shafts. That's probably where some of that severe hail is falling. As the storm continued to shrivel up, one of the precipitation shafts tightened up into a focused shower. It was obvious by now that this storm was pretty much dead, so I was looking around for a new target. This storm off to my northeast was a left turner. These storms are usually the result of a split in which one storm turns right and the other left. Usually the left turning storm is elevated and races away to the north before it dies. They can be prolific hail and wind producers, but tornadoes are usually favored on the right split. The right split storm had died and this left split had become dominant and was the only play nearby so I went after it. You can see here it's got a nice back sheared anvil and some really hard convection. As I approached, I suspected this storm was actually an anti-cyclonic supercell, meaning that it was rotating clockwise, opposite of what supercells in the northern hemisphere usually rotate. If that were the case, the structure on this storm would be mirrored, and I would have to get north of the storm to get on the rain-free base. The storm was also moving north, so getting into the position would be difficult and take some time. That might be part of the rain-free base and the storm's flanking line extending off to the left with the precipitation core off to the right. This is opposite of what you'd normally expect. I never got in front of the storm and I don't think it produced any tornadoes despite the radar indicating a tornadic vortex signature on the northern flank of the storm. With the sun lighting up the back end though, it was a really photogenic storm. You can see a rainbow moving through the precipitation core which is probably filled with heavy rain and hail. Catching up with the back end of the storm, I decided I'd try to core punch through the core here and see if I could get out ahead of it. The storm was now crossing back over the cap rock and moving into the canyon terrain that would be less favorable for chasing, so I eventually had to give it up. Here's another view of that possible anti-cyclonic updraft base. Turning west here, the precipitation core looked like a tumultuous waterfall, dumping huge amounts of rain and hail. This was a nice photogenic end to the chase.